This time on Road and Race, 10 secrets to getting a great first track day. Number one, brakes. You don't need to make any changes to your car for your first track day, but I would strongly advise swapping out your brake pads for a more race orientated type. Normal street pads won't be able to cope with the amount of heat that the constant heavy braking of track demands, and you'll find that only last two to three laps before you have no brakes. This loss of braking can come quite suddenly, so either stick to just a few laps and come in, or swap out the pads. New race spec pads that also work well on the road should last for about 10 laps. For £80, you can buy new pads for all four corners, and you can swap them out yourself with only simple hand tools. Click the suggested banner to see my step-by-step -step guide. The pads I use are listed in the description box. Probably goes without saying, but if you only check one thing before your track day, check your brakes. Click the suggested banner for my guide that steps you through how to check the essentials such as brake fluid and how worn your brake discs are. Also, if your brake fluid needs changing, I have a guide to doing that yourself too. Number two, arrival. Bring your driving license and a crash helmet. Most venues rent helmets if you don't own one. When you get there, your car will be noise tested. A microphone will be used to measure the decibel level at your exhaust at 4,000 RPM. These vary from track to track, but a 100 decibel limit is common. This shouldn't be a problem with a normal streetcar unless you've changed your exhaust. Next is sign on, where you'll need to complete the waiver forms, and then there's the safety briefing. After that, you can line up to do the low speed sighting laps to get used to the circuit. Number three, choice of circuit. If you're a beginner, I'd advise choosing an airfield based track day as they are generally easier to learn and generally have less things to potentially crash into. Also, you're less likely to get a professional race team turning up and using it as a test day. Number four, tuition and insurance. Simply put, book some tuition. You'll get 20 minutes for about 20 pounds and in my opinion, makes a difference between a good track day experience and a bad one. They'll teach you how to drive the track, how to brake and how to handle your car properly at speed. Insurance wise, on the day, there's no comeback if you crash or someone hits you. So you can buy special track day insurance if you want for about 1% of the cost of the vehicle. I personally don't bother as the risk is low and in three years I've never had or seen an incident. Number five, stuff. No point carrying around stuff you don't need in the car, so take the spare wheel, toolkit and unnecessary items out of the car, as we all know a lighter car is a better car. Also, clear out all the junk you have in the cabin, as this can become a projectile if you have an accident. Put it all in a bag and out of the way. Also, fit the towing eye to the car, so if you need to be towed off the track for any reason, the marshals can do it quickly and not hold everyone else up longer than needed. Number six, engine care. Something that may be obvious, but make sure the engine is up to temperature before setting it onto the track to avoid any damage. Something that might be less obvious is that it's vital to do a cool down lap before coming off the track. The engine and exhaust can get extremely hot, and if you just stop the car and get out, then all the heat will soak in and cause premature engine wear. This heat soak is one of the contributing factors to IMS failure in Porsche engines. As shown here, some venues have a dedicated cool down area to avoid you going slow on the track itself. Number seven, heat. Not vital, but a laser thermometer will tell you how hot your brakes are so you'll know if they've cooled down enough to go back out. Standard road discs may take longer to cool than more expensive race orientated discs, so if you're waiting more than 30 minutes for them to cool below 40 degrees centigrade, it might be worth investing in new discs. Number 8. Handbrake. As shown, the discs will get very hot, so don't put the handbrake on when you've stopped or the parking shoe is likely to fuse to the disc. Number 9. Tyres. Again, not vital on your first day but tyre pressure will go up after a few laps on the track. You can test the pressures after and let some air out to maintain the recommended level and reduce uneven tyre wear. Just don't forget to pump them back up before you go home. I usually start by letting out three PSI and go from there. Talking about tyre wear, people always ask if you need to replace your tyres after a track day. The answer is no. You won't be drifting your car around, so wear will be minimal. I see about quarter to half a millimetre of wear per track day. Number 10. Don't be intimidated. It's your first time out, so you'll be slow. There's no getting around that. And you'll probably have cars behind you wanting to pass. The organizers of a well-run day will stress this is a casual, fun day at the briefing. So don't let other drivers intimidate you. You've paid just as much money to be there as they have, and they were beginners once too. Be courteous though, and on a straight, indicate right and let them pass. But don't let idiots press you to let them by when it's unsafe on other areas of the track. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and hit the like button as it helps us make more shows. Also, please hit the share button to let other people know about the show. 
If you have any questions or suggestions for future shows, please leave a comment. For notification and news about the show, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. All the tools and parts we use are listed on our website. Click the suggested box at the top of the screen now to watch the next video in this series. Thanks for watching.